a bit more into the detail side of things, master planning, common pressures that I see out there working on sites is, hey, we've got this precinct development. Can you chuck a surf park in this little space here? The surf park then is often confined in size. It becomes about that surf park. It becomes, there's less chance for the developer and the people putting money into that surf park to reward from the perimeter. And what that can mean is um, the, the perimeter, the smart developers will do what the ski industry did. They'll buy around it, they'll wait. So you get this waiting game. The initial developers um, in the surf park and the investors say, well, I'm not gonna be the lost leader here. Everyone else is winning. And the perimeter um, people are waiting for the surf park to go. So one way around that is integrating that. Have one owner of the development, try and create one team and invest in the attractor first. So when I've done stadiums, when I've done marinas and aquatic facilities, if you bring in an attractor, get everyone in on the attractor, share that risk, get that risk balance right, and then show them that they can all reward on the perimeter. It also creates a really good platform for you to create an authentic experience from inside out, and you can go as big as you want. You can go as, as large as you want. This is about 90 acres. The other thing you can do is you can create stays for people to have an experience for days and weeks at a time. That's People spend thousands of dollars on that. They'll spend tens, maybe hundreds of dollars on an hour of a surf activity. So it's about the experience and how you create that. And if you don't do it in the middle, people will try and do it around you. And it, you may be left behind in the middle, changing over new owners all the time. Or the, or the perimeter will buy you out at a low rate because they control the experience.